Welcome to the part two of our case solving and uh, case presentation introduction. And the part two is looking at how we can solve the case and uh, come up with some really outstanding solution and structure the overall solution into short term as well as long term parts. Great. Now, um, if we talk solutions, I believe that we should follow the concept of why, what, how. Yes. So why should a company do something? Why should it come up with a solution? Um, what should the solution stand for? Yes. And some questions that you might want to ask or, or that might help you to answer that why question are things like, you know, in the future, Simon will or, or can do something that he cannot do today. Yes. And then we can ask ourselves, what is it? Or how can we uh, then make sure that we can actually offer that to Simon? Yes. Or going back to the, to the left, why box? Like today, Simon cannot do something but he would like to do that. So what is it that we can help him with and, and how can we serve uh, Simon? Or technology allow us to overcome bottlenecks and, or uh, today Simon is very happy, but maybe in the future he will have children that basically changed, uh, changes his needs. Or if you look at the workforce, our workforce uh, today might be quite happy, but uh, we will have millennials coming to us and uh, what is it that they expect uh, or we, we move into developing market or technologies improve. Okay, so that's basically the why part. Why is it that we need a new solution? Why is it that we have to change? What? And the what part is uh, kind of a narrow set and it's maybe the things that are listed here so we can add uh, services, we can add partners, new partners for sales distribution, we can add new marketing, uh, for instance, we can add new products uh, or, or new services, new offerings, new customers, new business segments, new uh, markets, or new revenue streams, new, new profit elements, new cash flows. Important Whatever you choose or, or however you answer the what question, make sure you can explain how this actually contributes to the why. So if uh, Simon has children, for instance, yes, so he has new needs, try to explain why it is that additional services help him most. Why not new products? Yes. Now, if you look at the how part, the how part is basically how companies operate. And uh, companies, they operate in, with a set of aspects. So they have a production process. In, maybe in the production process, there is something like customer integration. They, they use technologies. They use apps. They use suppliers. They use know-how personnel. Uh, they apply marketing. They have certain locations for production, for sales, like stores, for instance. Uh, they are faced with regulation, they have a model for revenue stream, for financing, they have a certain style of leadership, education, uh, employee education, simple of change. So that's basically the set of, of resources that uh, companies integrate to basically um, provide the what part to then serve Simon, for instance, and answer the question why a solution is needed. Now, for the how part, it is important that not every suggestion, like adding a new service, might not need all of these aspects. If we add a new service, we maybe just need a new app, let's say. Okay? So, whatever the solution is that we're focusing on, we need to select the four or maybe three most important how aspects to make that new service available to serve uh, the new needs of Simon with the children. 
that's the argumentation, that's the logic of the argumentation here. Great. Here, to find such new ideas, to find such new business models, we might apply business models. And that's the only place where we basically apply business models. As the business model help us to structure all our analysis and all our uh, thinking from before into a, a structured why, what, how offering for the customer. Examples might include the BCG matrix. Yes. So we basically analyze uh, what is the market potential and uh, what, what is the current market size. Then we structure our, um, our products into question marks, stars, cows, and the poor dogs. And for each of those four categories, there is a best practice how to move on. Yes, so the question mark, they must be actively uh, moved into the market. Uh, for the stars, we, we might uh, need uh, some extension aspects. For the cash cows, we just have to guard off that additional competitors come into the market. And for the poor dogs, we might actively discontinue them, so, so liquidate them or move them up to stars again. Related to this product orientation would be the Ansoff matrix, uh, which is basically uh, looking at the options that we have for uh, new markets or new products or existing markets, uh, new markets, existing products and uh, new products. And here again, we have four typical quadrants and each of those quadrants like market development might require a specific set of how activities. So we first decide in which quadrant we want to go into and then we look at some theory, what are the best how approaches to make that possible. Fortified Forces is uh, an interesting tool if we want to move into a new, analysis, a new industry. And uh, Maslow, is an interesting concept if you talk about a customer and customer majority. So uh, the older uh, customers get, the more additional requirements they have. So students, uh, they basically just uh, need the, the basic needs to be uh, taken care of. But as they grow older and they get some income and make careers and become CEOs, maybe things like esteem or self-actualization are more in their need category. Last but not least, we have the St. Gallen Management Model, SGMM. And I believe this is a very, very comprehensive uh, model, which can be used if we talk about company development. And again, I believe this is something that is rarely used in cases. Yes. Nevertheless, this is the place where we can use some of these models to basically knock ourselves out and coming up with new ideas, comprehensive solutions, how we could address why a company needs solution uh, to stay relevant in the future. We have some great examples. This is an example from uh, January uh, 2020. And this is the annual a meeting of Volkswagen where, quite by surprise, the CEO of Volkswagen Group, Herbert Dies, mentioned that uh, Volkswagen is doing uh, pretty good, but they need radical change. Yes, they are saying that Tesla is becoming one of their biggest competitors and they are seen by the market very differently. Tesla is seen as a software company. In, instead of uh, like a traditional car manufacturers, which he says their time is basically over. Yes. He also introduces that uh, in the future, uh, the car will, be, will become something very, very different. He actually says that the car will be uh, the most connected device and device uh, that is uh, more 
uh, relevant for customers than, than the smartphones are today. That's an example of a radical change of um, a company taking a, a twist very fast, which was not really foreseeable. Nevertheless, most companies, most industry, they do change, but typically they change over a longer period of time. So the, the first example is uh, the car leasing market in the US. Again, we can see that over a period of five years, uh, the leasing actually has increased uh, quite significantly every year between four, uh, three and five percent. So that is quite significant increase every year. Uh, another example would be the financial crisis. So in the financial crisis, car sales, they dropped uh, really, really, really bad. Uh, something that nobody expected could, could happen. But that's also an example. It's, uh, outside market shocks are always a good example, but they are unforeseeable. Nevertheless, this is an example of, of a radical shock where all the companies knew, uh, knew we have to do something different. Another very long-term development uh, for fundamental changes would be the airline industry. So back in the uh, 60s, 70s, uh, traveling air uh, traveling was a really luxury good with uh, one person taking care of a few customers. Today it's quite the opposite. It's a huge plane and only one uh, flight attendant is serving the customers. Here we see the average fare price. And as you can see between 1980 and 2010, the actual fare price dropped uh, from 600 to like uh, to almost 150. So that's a huge uh, decrease in, 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 the, in the revenues or the revenue potential for airlines. And obviously they had to change significantly over these uh, 30 years to actually stay in the market. Another example would be the total food spending. So this is basically the per capita disposable income spending on food. And as you can see, food at home, so uh, what, what people spend on grocery came down significantly in the last 50 years. Yes, and again, if people are willing to spend less or only willing to spend less, it automatically uh, means that uh, the companies must change. Some of the recent changes that we see would be Amazon Go, where there is basically no checkout. So the online shopping experience taken to offline grocery. And in Switzerland, for instance, uh, we see the two main players offering some kind of self-service station which is obviously not quite what Amazon Go does, but it's, uh, again, very significant change in the cost structure of these companies. So if you look at certain industries over a longer period of time, we do see that most industries do undergo significant changes uh, every now and then. That's another aspect to, to look at similar things. Um, these would be uh, the, the brands, the, the most recognized brands in 2018 and in 2008. 2008, we have a lot of um, fossil fuel companies, as a matter of fact. And in uh, 2018, obviously, it's been a, a huge change. Um, uh, there is Microsoft, which was on both uh, lists, but that's about it. So. Uh, how we uh, look at companies has changed over those 10 years significantly. What we, uh, we th see as large, important, valuable companies changed so much. One aspect of this change has become uh, platforms, so exchange platforms, as well as uh, uh, maker platforms which basically changed these marketplaces very, very radically. And uh, we all know the example of uh, Uber. So the biggest taxi company doesn't own taxis or own cars. Airbnb, the biggest uh, hotel 
uh, offer a service uh, doesn't own hotels. But we see similar changes in other industries. For instance, uh, an industry that you might be less uh, yes, uh, knowledgeable about would be the tractor industry. There is a Rigi truck, it's actually a Swiss tractor company, who has revolutionized the, the market for uh, medium-sized uh, tractors, also an electric tractor, or Hilti, which constantly revolutionizes how professionals drill holes, actually not only drill holes, but make sure that the hole uh, is attached with a, a fixing that is absolutely unique for the purpose that it's been doing. So try to take these companies that have changed the markets in the past and use some of their approaches as inspiration for your own solution. What can we learn from them that uh, yes, that, that makes our uh, solution to the case unique. So, the overall so solution is that we basically develop one vision. So, we take all the broad analysis and, and all the business models and we basically develop one vision and the vision is maybe a five-year-out uh, suggestion. However, we now have to break that down into a short-term solution and a long-term solution. For the short-term solution, we use the, the same concept of why, what, how again. However, we narrow it down to what we can achieve short-term. Yes. And again, it depends a little bit on, on, on the case, on the question, but maybe... Uh, Elements like uh, today Simon cannot, what, what he cannot do today, that's maybe something that we can easily address with an additional service. Yes, and an additional, uh, additional uh, service can be potentially addressed easily with an app, for instance, or with uh, social media. Yes. So think through this why, what, how again, but from the perspective, what can be achieved short-term. So we basically use our one vision that we have and we try to break it down, which part of the vision can be achieved within the next six months, let's say. So from the how perspective, again, choose few ones. Every change so every additional service, for instance, might have an impact on, on all these how points, but choose few. Yes. Last but not least, I would like to mention that uh, technology uh, is, uh, uh, is always a little bit uh, a mixed thing because technology can be short-term as well as uh, long-term. So for technology, it's really about the... the the extent how it's implemented or the extent how it's used. Is it more like an add-on feature or, or is it used as the core of the new technology used as core of the actual offering? So technology um, is, is a, a little bit difficult to argue. Nevertheless, it can offer great customer benefit. That's why I think it should be included in the considerations. So now we, now we talk about customer value. Short term means we should select things that we can change relatively easy, but they do have a big impact on our vision, how we offer value uh, to the customer in the future. If you talk about value creation, if you talk about customer, then uh, we might again use some, some guiding principle. So that supporter value chain which basically says that the company has uh, the company has a uh, production basically has some steps that it has to go through and the company itself has some supporting activities which would be these uh, activities up here so again think through how you have to reshape them or how you can reshape them in the smallest possible way in the easiest possible way to still achieve uh, this change for the, the customer. A second 
model to uh, use as a thinking process would be the buying experience model. So we could basically think through how our uh, customer gets aware of our produ product, how he considers us, how he actually purchases it, and then basically uh, the equivalent on the experience side, on the customer experience side. A more mathematical way is that we look at the value that we create and then we start to break it down into parts. Yes, so we could argue that value is quality related to cost price. Yes, and then uh, quality is like uh, it's easy to use, quick, straightforward uh, knowledge that the customer uh, has or that our staff has, uh, how much our staff is listening to the customer and if the customer is happy with the outcome. Each of them is going to be breakdown again. Now, I do believe that if we come up with suggestions, the suggestions might must be very, very detailed. So a suggestion could be that we use some kind of pop-up stores. But that's not enough. Uh, the pop-up store is, is actually not the level of solution that we're looking at. We need to go much, much deeper than this. We need to go deep enough so we can actually draw some kind of mock-up. Yes? So that basically requires that we are saying, okay, who is building this pop-up store? Which suppliers do exist? How should it look like? Yes? And then we might even want to consider the financials saying, okay, you know, is there a cost component to it? It's not required, but we, we in the best possible case, we can do it down to this level. Then the locations and the durations in which cities should be placed. And again, if you look at the mock-up, we see some palm trees in the back here. So that's maybe Southern California or whatever. But the, the picture must be detailed enough that we can say, okay, it's Zurich. It, it's the, the Church of Zurich or uh, the Federal Parliament, Parliament in Burr. So what are the locations? What are the durations? Then what are the announcements per location? There must be some kind of advertising, some kinds of social media. So uh, which type of influencer do we attract? What is the cost that we might uh, need to consider for attracting uh, this influencer? Then the operations. So how many visitors do we expect? How many staff do, do we have to have? Uh, how many giveaways do we need? And last but not least, we might also have some after-action follow-up activities like newsletter, discounts, personal visits, uh, again, maybe social media. So the suggestion, let's, let's, let's have a pop-up store. That's not enough. We need to consider uh, how does it look like, where is it, where is it going to be for how many weeks, uh, how do we prepare the marketing for these pop-up stores, how do we operate them and what do we do with all the contacts that we had in the pop-up store? That's the detailed level that is required. Uh, I believe that most presentations, most cases, most solutions, they lack detail. They basically end by saying, oh, let's do a pop-up store. And then the jury is a little bit lost because everybody has a different understanding what a pop-up store is. And that's why you have to, to guide the jury through these details. So you have to consider these details before you can actually choose pop-up store as a good option for the so short-term solution. And these detailed considerations apply to almost everything. So here we will basically have a similar consideration if we want to offer some kind of customer credit uh, rating or some leasing option for customers. So we basically need a finance partner. Yes. So again, we have to consider what are the suppliers, uh, what are the prices, what are the number of customer requests that we have, that we have to process through these partner. What is our benefit from them? Uh, from, from partnering with a credit rating agency or, or a leasing option. 
what are implementation questions for operational implementation and last but not least there must be some kind of advertising uh, to let our customer know that we have these additional uh, offerings last but not least uh, marketing is one of the main consideration for uh, short-term uh, purposes uh, one of the reason is we have to let our customers know now if we talk about marketing there are two things that I really like the first one is AIDA so that's attention interest desire action so what are the steps that the customer has to go through here I have used a, a little bit a more extended um, AIDA concept yes it's basically all the way from clicks uh, click-through, visits, conversion rate, uh, sales delivery, word of mouth, repeat customers. On a second axis, maybe we can see that the customer is evolving. And the example would be back here, cars. Yes, so the first car, uh, excuse me, the first car that you might want to buy uh, after your university or maybe during your university is a, kind of a small Volkswagen yes but if you get your first promotion or if you get a new job you might want to you know move up your car a little bit so you buy the next bigger model of Volkswagen and then you might have kids well you need a bigger car and then the kids are out and you know you kind of like to have an SUV or you would actually like to have a different brand, not a Volkswagen, but a Porsche. And all these cars are under one roof. Yes. So with their uh, different, uh, with their product portfolio, the Volkswagen group can actually walk with the customer through such development. And that's why these indications here are basically saying that the customer might walk from left to right different times but he kind of uh, increases his expectations all the time that's why in the beginning uh, for conversion rates uh, things like Instagram uh, might be enough yes uh, but later on you might need to have some very exclusive VIP events to still uh, convince the customer that he actually should consider uh, buying with you. Again, make it specific. If we talk about such an event with VIPs, make it specific. Uh, make a suggestion like two times a year in Hong, Kong, in Hong Kong, entrance fee and so on. Make it specific. With this we know that the short-term solution basically details three initiatives, three hows that you have to combine in order to achieve quick wins, to remove bottlenecks and in the best case also lead into the long-term solution. The long-term solution again uses the why, what, how concept of so the overall solution. Why do we need a new solution what do we offer the customer and how do we offer that but it looks at the more long-term changes in the why is the what and the hows so I mentioned the children that our customer will get children that's maybe a little bit more long-term and automatically the needs might change more significantly that maybe we have a, a new segment a new business segment that we have to open up and we have to have like new revenue streams. Just tweaking the existing revenue streams is not enough. We need to have a, a very new revenue stream. Again, uh, on the right hand side, select two or three, uh, the most important, uh, the, the, the most challenging house. On the left side, for the technology, as I mentioned, technology can be short term as well as long term contribution uh, to your solution. Now, if we really want to change the fundamental aspects of business, and now I talk about the change for uh, Volkswagen or um, the, the change in the food industry, 
Yes, we might have, uh, we, we ni might need to think through different models. The Porter value chain model is, is always a great model, but of course we have to have uh, very different uh, options for operations or for marketing, for instance. Uh, another uh, model uh, which might be uh, a little bit more innovative uh, might be a model where we basically again look at our broad analysis what are trends in, in the industry like a digital layer what is coming from digital companies uh, like the Uber or Airbnb and then move ourselves back to uh, sales maybe and more legacy things uh, uh, like what is our production process again uh, what are the stuff that, that we need yes and once we have developed these ideas then we we actually can develop the solutions that lead to these changes now um, I would like to go back to what we've discussed uh, already because this is basically what we have to keep in mind. So now we are basically saying that we change fundamentally how we get, how we make money, how we make product and how we get cash. And as we already discussed in the example of our digital music, Napster as well as iTunes, they couldn't keep up with the speed of other great minds, of other great ideas. As an example, we could also make the same examples for the other, um, what we discussed before. The same goes for cost models, revenue model. Quality today doesn't exist because they were not fast enough to change their cost model. Alphabet, I mentioned, they basically discontinue a lot of their services because they just don't have enough time to match the revenue model and the cost model. Yes. And also for production, um, Ford uh, did have to go through a significant restructuring uh, in order to stay in the market and Bali at one point decided that they stopped production and are only a brand. Yes. So the, the long-term solution must be open for radical change. Yes. I believe that it should be any long-term solution should be customer-centric and here uh, I would like to compare Sara and Gap. Now, interestingly, both have positive as well as negative examples. So uh, let's talk about uh, the positive aspects of Sara. It's very customer centric. It's very fast. Uh, every week, every two weeks, they have new items. So customer can always find something new, uh, something nice and catchy to wear. A gap on the other side is very predictable. What you're going to get. Things look very alike uh, every season. However, if we now talk about the sustainability perspective, so um, if, if new customer requests come into play, then maybe uh, Sara is on the losing side because Sara obviously produces a lot of waste. Whereas Gap, with their long lasting, very durable products, uh, textiles, they have an advantage and customers say, from a sustainability perspective, I actually like Gap clothes better because they are so much uh, stronger. So even if we talk about customer-centric, maybe there are different customer segments or a changing needs of customer, which might lead to uh, the importance or the success of business models changing. So be careful what you choose and how you argue. In this example, if you talk about Sarah, then you could argue positively for a profit uh, ar argumentation. But if you use sustainability as a benchmark, we would say that uh, Sarah is not very customer centric. And the opposite for Gap. Now, 
Another example would be if we are saying that like a closing chain or IKEA has to enter the assembly market. And here the example is again how detailed a solution must be. And of course that goes for all the examples that I indicated on, on the last three pages. If we do suggest that gap has to go in the direction of Sarah, then we have to go really, really in details. So let's take the idea of uh, IKEA to Saudi Arabian markets. So the first question would be which cities to go to. So we, we need to have some kind of analysis about the cities, uh, what the population is, what the, 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 the purchase power is, if there are enough target customers uh, in, in that specific city. Yes. Then again, locations within the city, the size of the store, the number of the employee per store, uh, then the product selection. Do we want to sell all our products or only uh, selected uh, items that maybe fit the markets? And if we go to the Saudi Arabian market, then adaptation of products is, of course, uh, very important because, as we all know, especially for clothes, uh, the, the, the women they shouldn't show their faces in, in public, yes? So they also shouldn't uh, show their faces in marketing material, yes? So we cannot, potentially, we cannot use the pictures that we use for our US catalog for our Saudi Arabian catalog. So we need to prepare our marketing material. Uh, we need to have a, a market entry marketing, which might be uh, different than the normal marketing material that we have. And last but not least, there must be a way to progress, uh, to assess the progress. And of course, if the progress is not as expected, then we need some uh, suggestions uh, or our solution, our long-term solution must include some suggestions what we could change, where we would uh, most likely uh, tweak uh, the suggestions that we come up for marketing, for instance, or for product selection. Now, an example where we would actually need something like the St. Gallen management model because it's a very comprehensive uh, question or, or change, a very uh, far-fetching fundamental change, would be if the case asks us for something like uh, what, what is required for autonomous vehicles or, or what is required for connected infrastructure for autonomous vehicles. Yes, and here are some of the, the, the things that you might already know, yes, um, left side is taken from Tesla, uh, how they basically try to approach uh, autonomous driving, autopilot, they call it autopilot. On the right hand side, it's actually an advertising from a 5G, uh, so uh, telecom company, and they are basically indicating how much communication is required for a connected infrastructure. But both pictures, on both sides, they actually only show a very small part of the problem. Because if you really think about it, you need, uh, for autonomous vehicle, for connected infrastructure, you need so many players on board, you need so many regulations, you need to approach international differences uh, differently. For instance, uh, what are about construction sites on German uh, autobahn? How, how can an autonomous a vehicle drive uh, deal with that yes and last but not least it, it typically would be a, a stepped approach so a first stepped approach is maybe over the air updates that you can uh, apply to cars so you can actually improve or correct the systems that you deliver with the car yes so in, in such a really really broad case I suggest that you use a very comprehensive business model to really capture all the aspects that are required for that uh, long-term fundamental change. Now with this, again, we maybe select three initiatives that we can implement long-term, meaning two to three years, in order to achieve this long-term vision that we have established in the, in the overall solution step. And this concludes our second part. In the third part, we are now going to talk about the examples 